This truck's 55 years old, and we're gonna cut it all up today. Hey guys, Cody Barramani here. Today, we're mini-notching my 1970 C10, and we're gonna use the Rockwood Plasma Cut 40 and the Rockwood MiG-160 to get it done. So we're installing this mini-notch to get this truck as low as possible without having to cut up the bed floor. As it is, I had about a four inch drop. I'm looking to go about seven. So this mini notch is gonna give me the clearance I need to still have up travel and a nice ride. So we picked up this mini notch kit on Amazon, cheapest one we could find, came with some hardware, and it's actually designed to bolt in. Now, I wanna take it a step further and actually weld it in, especially on the outside. Where we have rivets that we knock out, we're gonna retain the bolts, but otherwise, we're actually gonna weld all this up. I feel like it's gonna be much more solid, and it's also gonna just kinda of lock everything together. To get it done, we're gonna use the Plasma Cut 40 to make our notch, and also to get rid of any rivets that need to get busted out. This is gonna do a great job at that. Then, we're gonna switch over to the Rockwood MiG-160. We're gonna set it up to weld this 3 16 to the eighth inch frame. We should be able to dial it in and uh, lay down some nice beads around this whole thing. So if at any point during this video, you wanna learn more about these products, there's a link in the description below. Make sure you click on that and check it out. So the first thing we have to do is get the bump stop hanger off and we have to do that busting these rivets out, and then we're gonna make our notch. So let's get the Plasma Cut 40 all fired up, I'll get suited up, and we'll get started. All right, so the first thing on the chopping block is this bump stop hanger. So we gotta knock these three rivets out. We're gonna do that using our Plasma Cut 40. We'll be able to work around the rivet and then blow through. So one quick tip before I cut this all off, I actually wanna mark where the center of the top rivet is. That's gonna reference where the center of my bump stop on the mini notch is gonna be. I'll still have the hole there, and that's gonna help me locate it front to back. All right, now that we've got that off, we're gonna cut this spring pad up and get it flush with the edge of the frame. That's gonna allow us the clearance we need to get the mini notch held up. All right, so there's a couple more rivets we gotta address, and that's what holds this rear shock cross member to the frame. These two have to come out, and that's actually what's gonna help locate our mini notch. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can get yourself oxyacetylene torch, blow them out. You can cut them with a cutoff wheel, flush, and then try and use an air hammer and pound them out. And that typically works okay if you're gonna be able to get to them close to here and you have decent access. As you get further in the frame rail, you end up having to come at that at an angle with the air hammer and it ends up just sort of wedging it around. Not ideal. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the plasma cutter. Just like we were able to for the three rivets on the side here, we're gonna cut them up. Now our hole is not gonna be perfect and we're gonna have to do some cleanup work afterwards, but I found that to be the quickest, easiest method without really mangling anything, bending stuff up in the process, and it should give us a good result for what we're doing. Now, I know this is DIY, but these welding jackets do help you stay from being on fire. Otherwise you end up running around like Ricky Bobby and you're like, I'm on fire, I'm on fire. It's bad. So when using a plasma cutter to get these rivets out, you still have a little bit of cleanup work left. Now one thing I like doing, grab yourself some punches and a hammer or an air hammer with a round punch and you can actually push all that slag through and clean up the hole. We punched through the hole with the plasma cutter, but we don't have our final dimension. We essentially blew out a part of the rivet, and now we have to get the rest of the rivet out, so we're left with a clean hole. Let's hit this. There you go. We're left with some pretty clean holes, not much cleanup left. You can see in some spots where the plasma arc did nick it, but for what we're doing, that's gonna be fine. So now that we've got our rivets cut off and our bump stop hangers gone, 
we've trimmed up our spring plate and we've gotten rid of the rivets. The next thing we need to do is begin visualizing where we're actually gonna put the notch. Now, there's a couple ways to tackle this. You could take your mini notch, hold it up there, take a Sharpie, and just kind of give yourself an initial line. But chances are, it's not gonna be that precise. You're gonna end up having to cut maybe two or three times to get that finalized. What I like to do when I have something like this is make a template. I grab a manila folder, and what's nice about this manila folder, it's even got a 90 degree bend built into it. So I can take that and really contour it to that mini notch. I'm then gonna take this, flip it 180, and that's gonna give me a really clean spot to come in with the Sharpie and mark where I actually need to cut the frame out. I'm also gonna sight down where the center for that bump stop is and just give myself a little reference mark there. Again, the theory behind that, I'm gonna center that where the original center rivet was on that bump stop hanger and that should keep everything located where I'm looking for it to be. So I'm gonna leave my Sharpie line just knowing that I traced against that edge. If I cut that Sharpie line, I'll actually be ending up with a smaller template than I need. And something like this, it's actually better to potentially cut a little bit more than not enough because we're actually not trying to do a butt weld anywhere here, but we are trying to get this mini notch to fit tight to the frame. If we end up where this isn't tight and now it's sitting, we could end up with a quarter inch gap everywhere. That's gonna be a pain to weld. So you wanna get this to fit tight to the frame. All right, so I've got my template here. Again, I'm gonna line up that center with the center rivet, clamp that down from here, be able to just trace this out. And then in this case, we're also going to leave our Sharpie line when we cut. That way this doesn't grow by another eighth inch. All right, with our template all traced out, we're now gonna take our plasma cut 40 and cut this out. Now recognize, we're gonna end up with a little bit of slag on that cut. We are gonna come back with a flap disc, clean everything up, and just make sure it's all ready to go. But this will at least do 95% of the cutting, and it's gonna be really nice working around all these edges and working in this tight spot. If you tried to do this with just an angle grinder, it can be tricky getting everywhere you need to go. You'll be throwing sparks every direction, hitting yourself with them, at least with this. You know, it's all going away from you. So after that initial cut, let's see how this fits. And we're still caught up. I think actually a lot of it is the slag that I still have here. So I'm just gonna cut this out a little bit more. I'm actually gonna clean up the grinder as well at the same time, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we just finished up the final grinding we needed to do. We also cleaned up the bolt holes, make sure they could fit our fasteners. Let's get this bolted up. All right, so we've got our mini notch all fitted up, happy with where we have it. The next thing we'd have to do is prep this for welding. So we'd have to grind off all these edges, get rid of all this powder, it's really thin on this kit, and then get rid of all the rust. We want a clean surface wherever we're gonna weld. After we do that, we're actually gonna then go back and coat the area that'll be covered with some kind of rust inhibitor. You, you can either use like a weld through self-etching primer, you can use rust encapsulated platinum, you can weld through that. You just wanna get something on there to prevent any rust from happening in between these two panels. 
Now I've got the other side all prepped and ready to go. So we're gonna jump over to that side and get to welding. All right, so we've got this side all cut up and ready to go. We're actually ready to weld. We're gonna use the MIG-160 here. We're gonna run it in manual MIG mode. We've got 30 wire. This frame's about an eighth. Now these are a full 3 16 So we're gonna be favoring our heat onto our mini notch and just be working around. So even though this is a bolt-on kit, we're primarily gonna weld it on. On the bottom, we're gonna be using bolt holes where the rivets were. This hole is actually what locates your upper spring mount. These holes, we're gonna plug weld. So we gotta get them clean. We gotta make sure the area that we're gonna weld is clean, and that's gonna ensure we don't get any dirt in our weld. All right, so we've got the piece all mounted up used all the rivet locations, and uh, we're happy with the fitment. You know, we've got a nice consistent gap up top where we'll be able to place our weld. Everything looks good here. And then we've got all of our paint ground back, all of the rust ground back. So where we're gonna weld, it's clean. Let's get the welder set up. So we've got synergic mode and manual mode. The synergic mode is designed for ease of use. You just set your material thickness and go. And then you can also fine tune ours. So you do have some additional voltage adjustment there. I'm gonna use the manual mode and the setup chart. That's just what I'm comfortable with and sort of used to over the years of welding. So these setup charts are really easy to read. Figure out first your process for MIG welding. We're using 7525 gas and we've got ER70S-6 wire. We've got 030 wire. So that means we're gonna sit in this 030 row. To select our thickness, we know we've got 3 16 on the notch plates. So that's what we're gonna set our machine to. That gives us 330 inches per minute, 18.6 volts. That's a great starting point. Depending on your preferences, you may adjust that up or down as needed. So we've got manual MIG, we've got the mix setting there, and that's for the 7525 gas. We're gonna first set our voltage. And then we're gonna set our wire speed. Again, this is gonna be a great starting point. You may need to fine tune this. All right, so before we begin actually welding our little mini notch in, we're gonna test this machine out and get our settings dialed in on some scrap piece of metal. I just had some 3 16 stock, some flat bar. I'm just gonna make some welds here, make sure I'm happy with everything, just get comfortable. That's always a really good practice to do when you've got a new machine and an important project like this. Let's dig into it. All right, so I'm just gonna tack this piece on and then I'll be moving around and trying some different settings. It's always good to check your gas and make sure it's flowing correctly. I typically do that when I start welding. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Now on this overlap here, I think I'm spending a little bit too much time on my upper material because you can see my lower edge here is not fully wetted. So I'm gonna try and adjust my angle and do the rest of this piece. So overall, this scrap piece was really handy. I haven't welded in a little bit, and I was able to test here, check my settings, and also my form and my plan. On my first piece, I ended up spending a little bit too much time on the top and not the bottom. And you can tell that by the lower edge. On my second weld, I was a lot happier with the way I was able to get the heat into the lower piece of material and get that lower edge wet. The settings from the setup chart, they were spot on. We're gonna start with those, and uh, if needed, we can adjust. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how this is going. Now, what we just did was weld the mini notch to this cross member, which is actually below the frame rail. So we did that in one pass. Now we're gonna have to combine everything together in an additional pass. So we're gonna 
get a little wider and stitch all this together. It's pretty common to come across situations like this where you've got multiple pieces of metal that were attached and then you have a radius where the frame rail was bent. You know, so as you look around this truck, you can see there's a lot of cross members where if you wanted to put a piece of plate over this, you actually have a couple pieces that you're tying together and you've got some different heights. That's where welding in multiple passes is gonna help us out. And here's an underhead shot showing you exactly what it looks like when you're welding. The truck's original frame is toward the top of the screen and the notch is on the left slash bottom of it. So overall, this Rockwood MiG 160 is working very well. It's been super consistent. I haven't had to adjust my settings at all. I've been really happy with how it's welding. I've got my front all welded up. I've got the whole top and the back vertical. I just have to do my vertical weld up front here, do my plug welds, and we'll be ready to go. And there you have it. Without much work, we were able to get this mini notch installed. We were able to get it welded so it never moves again. And the Rockwood stuff did a great job. The Plasma Cut 40 made quick work of getting all those rivets cut out and making the notch itself. Didn't take much fine tuning with the grinder to get them exactly where we wanted. The MiG 160 did an awesome job welding this together. Now we ran it in manual MiG and we used the settings in the chart. We didn't even have to adjust them. They were spot on. Ran 75-25 gas and we ran 030 wire. That did great with this 8th inch 3 16th combination that we had to weld up. We uh, hit it off with the flap disc, a DA, and this will be ready to get into paint. So if you want any more information around the Rockwood welders and cutters, as well as any Eastwood products we sell, be sure to check out eastwood.com.